All right, so we're going to continue with part two. We're going to look at rejection defined. We're going to get a little bit more into the defining part of it here as we go along. So one of the things we want to look at here is the spirit of rejection is not applicable to the flesh. And the reason that uh, we want to look at that is that there's this, there's this thought pattern that's out there, and I think we touched on it a little bit before, but the that we can somehow justify the flesh through having had to deal with this issue in our life. And that is something that will not work. A man's pride, Proverbs 29, verse 23, shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. If we humble our hearts and we accept the fact that we cannot connect this to some fleshly thing in our life and allow it to be there, then we're in a good position. We can never justify the flesh or its actions through bringing in a psychological problem. True humility must be embraced and for deliverance to take place. This thing is starting to drop on me. Okay, now we're going to go look at the two different kinds of rejection that take place in our life. There's two different kinds that we may, be, we may face in life. The first one is active rejection. Intentional, which is intentional or planned action carried out in spoken words and or physical action against us. That is active rejection. Active rejection can be brought to us through almost anyone in life. We can face it on the job with someone that we never talked to before. Uh, it can be someone in our family. Uh, I remember a number of years ago coming on to a job and across the road there was a father and a son who were having a butting heads issue and the father started screaming at the son and it just really hurt me to see that happen. That is active rejection where there's voices spoken against us of something that is taken action physically or through words. The other one is passive rejection that we face. And this is one that we really need to look at. The indifference of or general neglect from someone who is designed to give you love, affirmation, and affection. Normally a spouse, parent, friend, or someone else important in your life. This can only come through those who you are connected with and associated with, who have responsibility in your life that can affect you through passive rejection. And we'll look at this one a little more later as we keep going on. Studies show that passive rejection can be as or even more destructive in our life than that of the active sort. We may think that active rejection is tougher, and for some cases it might be, but this is one that can leave deep effects in our hearts. When we live, uh, deal with passive rejection, one of the biblical examples that we'll be looking at tonight has this one in it, just to clarify a little bit more. For example, an unloved child will become like a deflated type. If there is a mother who will not love their daughter or their child, son or daughter. That child, can you imagine how it will be without love? It will become like a deflated tire. We take those things for granted, don't we? Because we know that all of us in this room would love our child, we would think. But there are many cases where that's not true. And children grow up without love. And children grow up without with rejection in a passive way. Rejection's first introduction came through, guess who? Satan himself. When Satan tried to exalt himself through his pride, he was cast down, he was rejected. Satan's goal today is not so much to take you to hell, but rather that you would join him in his misery. That way he can get you to a place where he can bring destruction into your life. He wants us to become, he wants us to experience what he is feeling. That's his goal. 
He wants us to experience the rejection in his life, and that is why he is so out to do that, and that he will lie to us to get us to feel that way and believe that about God. Ezekiel 28, verse 14 through 16. Thou art an anointed cherub that covereth. I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou was, hast walked up and down in the midst of the cells of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created until iniquity was found in you. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence. Thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God. I will destroy you, O covering Jerob, from the midst of the stones of fire. Satan had a very high position in the kingdom, and he was cast out of it because of the pride of lifting himself up, and he experienced a great level, I would think, of rejection. Can you imagine being at that position and becoming where he was? That's huge. No wonder he wants us to join him. No wonder he wants us. Misery loves company, doesn't it? If Satan can get us to embrace rejection in our hearts, he has the position that he needs to accomplish his goals. <clears throat> now let's look at his introduction to mankind. When God created Adam and Eve, they were given all authority on the earth. Through their disobedience, Satan gained authority to bring the spirit of rejection on man. Man lost his identity as God's beloved son and daughter and became subject to the lies that came with rejection. Satan's encounter with Eve. Satan approached Eve with a question, bringing doubt. In Genesis 3.1, we read, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? He brought the question to her, and what happened? Because conviction was not yet established in Eve's heart to the level that the Holy Spirit can bring to us, because she wasn't really convinced, she wasn't really settled, she began to question God. Eve begins to doubt God. Thus, feelings of rejection started to take root. Did God withhold his real heart from me? Because he said, because he was not really, I really am not sure if I can trust him. This is the way the enemy will approach us with lies. And if we're not totally convinced, we may start believing his lies. This is what takes place in our hearts when God and the Holy Spirit is not fully in control of us. Satan then says, you shall not surely die, confirming the idea that God is not to be trusted above our own feelings. She was already starting to feel whether she could really, can I really trust God in what he said? And the serpent said to the woman, You shall not surely die, confirming it. For God doth know that in the day that you eat thereof, your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Suddenly, to Eve, eating of the fruit that she was not supposed to eat, became indifferent, because she started to believe his lies. Suddenly, that tree didn't look like it did before. And isn't that the way it works for us? Rejection has now taken full authority as they scramble for something to cover their shame. This is the way it was brought to us. Satan is a spiritual being. Lucifer is a spiritual being and will attack us in the spirit. Ephesians 2 verse 2 says, Wherein in time past he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. It's through the spirit that Satan will come to us and try to convince us that the things that God says is not true. He will do it persuasively. He will come in all kinds of ways to try to convince us. That is why it is so important for us to be convinced in our hearts, to allow the Holy Spirit to convince us. 
Otherwise, we can be so easily deceived. We can be deceived through all kinds of ways Satan will come, whether it's friends, uh, whatever, it can, it can happen. Satan has the power to blind the mind through the spirit. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 4, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Spiritual attacks will leave us with spiritual consequences. For example, unrepentant of sin in a home will leave the door open for the same spirit to enter to attack others in the same home. It's a spiritual thing can take place within a situation or setting. Those who have been abused spiritually or physically will often pick up spirits from their abuser. For example, sexual abuse may leave a spirit of lust in the abused. These are all areas that where spiritual attacks can take place, they can leave these strongholds and areas in our life that we are not even aware of. Now let's look at some deliverance here of this as well. The strong man must be bound by the only power capable to bind him. There is only one power that will deal with this issue if we have, have embraced it in our life. Matthew 12, verse 28 through 30. But if I cast out devils, Jesus saying himself, by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. In other words, he's saying, there is one power, one grace, one ability. Not ourselves. I think one of you were talking about that. We can't do it on our own. This is something we need God's help in. If I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. How else can they want to enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man, then he will spoil his house? He that is not with me is against me. He that gathereth, gathereth not with me is scattered abroad. Deliverance. Jesus is the answer. Allowing Jesus to fill our heart will deal with and deliver us from all forces of evil. The strong man in our life is simply an influence of a spiritual enemy that has a foothold. It's an influence. He influences us because he has a foothold. Luke 4, verse 14 through 19. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Deliverance is possible for us. Jesus is the answer. Mankind is the instrument of rejection, but not the source of it. Man can offer some help, but only the love of God destroys rejection in our life. Colossians 2, verse 15. Having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Okay, I think we're going to just stop with that this morning. And then what I have on for tonight is we're going to look at some biblical examples of this. I think that it will be maybe become more real to us if we allow those to resonate within us. So the, the truth is that if we have, an, if we have these issues in our life, if we have embraced Satan's lies, along with it, his heart is that we would experience 
the very thing that he feels. He wants to bind us through that. He wants to bring doubt and fear into our life. And when he can do that, then he has a foothold to Lord knows what he will do. You know, we may get away with it for a long time. We may be able to live with it for a long time and ignore it and keep pushing it back. But what we do is we give him access to possibly at some point bring great level of destruction into our life. And I think it's so important that we are willing to look at this, look at the strongholds, deal with them, and then allow Jesus to deal with them as well if we really want to be free and full. So that's all I have uh, this morning. Maybe we'll just open it up if there's other questions or thoughts that you have. Maybe a testimony of something that you you have personally experienced in this um, that you would like to share. So I think we'll just open it up now, and then I'm going to let Mike close the service. Well, thank you, uh, Eddie. Thank you, Eddie, for sharing. Um, unlike uh, Junior, with those a lot of information there, it's hard to even uh, get it written down fast enough for me and get it in my in my mind. But uh, some things that um, stood out to me. shared about uh, active rejection or passive rejection. I don't think that there was a lot of active rejection in my life. Um, but maybe more passive rejection. Um, and maybe uh, not even maybe sometimes just in circumstances uh, how things worked out in my life uh, as far as things that happened when I was maybe, well, like right when I was going to start with the youth group at church, then we changed the church and went to a church where there was very few people, just a couple families. And that affected me in, I think, where I kind of withdrew. I didn't have much of a social life. Um, and I think what that uh, happened in my life, what, what, what that caused was uh, insecurities. Um, and a lot of those didn't come to the surface until I got married. And then I found that in our marriage, how I reacted to things um, was, I was very insecure. Um, and it was maybe um, hard for me even to accept love. And 
that was in, in my life, that was something in our marriage, something that we had to work through. Um, and it, it, it happened in, in marriage. If I wouldn't have, that uh, was uh, 17 years ago yesterday when I asked my wife to marry me. So we celebrated that yesterday. expose some of those things, um, I'm sure I would be a very different person today than I am. Um, so I'm very thankful for that. And my wife's patience with me uh, through our marriage. Um, I don't know that I had, uh, I'm, I'm sure I still have a long ways to go, but I'm thankful that the, that the Lord has help bring some of those things to the surface and, and uh, I've been able to um, learn to uh, accept love and God's love and my wife's love and, and uh, not to be uh, as insecure I, I guess as I was and, and what that uh, like Eddie shared in Results of rejection, uh, he said, doubt and fear, anger, withdrawal and self-pity and denial. And for me, a lot of it would have, would have been in withdrawal and self-pity, maybe, but more so withdrawal. Um, but, so that's just my uh, personal uh, testimony to go along with what Eddie shared. Uh, and again, I think a lot of my Rejection was maybe more just in my mind, passive rejection, thinking that people don't really care about me, uh, but they probably did. Uh, I'm, I'm going to open it up again. I, I just, I guess, uh, for you all, I just, I think that we all have dealt with rejection at some time in our life, and I really want uh, you to, to, this morning, to be able to deal with it. If you need to deal with it, and and to um, you know, if there's something that you is on your heart that you feel like you should share, I'm just going to open it up again. Uh, um, you know, if there's if you'd like us to pray or just anything. Would anyone else like us to just especially remember, be remembered in prayer when we pray? Just raise your hand. I know it's, it could be hard to talk about, it, but if you, if you feel like you need some healing in your life and you want God to pour in His uh, His oil and wine in your life and be remembered in prayer, just raise your hand and we'll remember you in prayer. So close. Okay, uh, 
Let's stand. I will be dismissed. Lord, I thank you for your presence here with us today. Thank you for your love. Show to us, and Lord, I, I pray that you would help us to accept your love, to realize that you love us with an everlasting love, and you love us as your children. Uh, this morning, each one of us as your children, that we have given our hearts to you. And I pray that, that the lies of the enemy uh, would be silenced that come against your word and your truth. For your word says that truth will set us free. The truth will set us free. And I pray that the, the truth that we heard from your word this morning would set us free in our hearts to be who you want us to be, to, to uh, be free, free from our hearts. <laughs> and I pray that for those uh, of us that uh, here this morning who sense that need of uh, prayer, I pray for Heidi and also those who raised their hands this morning. And maybe there's others here that didn't even uh, have the uh, ability to raise their hand, but know in their heart that they need prayer for healing. And I pray for, for each of us, Lord. And maybe there's areas in our life that we don't even, even see, but your spirit will speak to us in, in the afternoon and the evening. Lord, I pray, heal, heal the hurts, heal the past, heal uh, the, uh, even the, the things that the enemy has brought in to blind our minds. Uh, I pray that there would your Holy Spirit and your love would come and give us victory in those areas. And now I just uh, pray your blessing on us as